Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today we're going to talk about the histogram. Now, if you've been around photography for a while, you've probably noticed that some photographers swear by the histogram. They use it all the time, whereas other photographers totally ignore it. Well, today I want to give you the basics of the histogram. I'm going to talk about how you could use it to your advantage and also talk about how it could fool you as well. And then you could decide for yourself whether or not it's a tool you want to use. Now, I'm going to be showing the histogram in Lightroom, but it really doesn't matter what application you're using. The histogram is the histogram is the histogram. It's the same in any application. Uh, some applications have different features, and you'll see in a moment that Lightroom has some different features that probably aren't in other applications, but I'll talk about that when I get to them. Now, first of all, what is the histogram? Well, let's just go to this very simplistic view of the histogram. When you take an image, your sensor captures the scene. Every pixel on your sensor captures one pixel worth of that scene. And the tone gets recorded by that pixel. Well, that tone then gets recorded or plotted to the histogram. The more pixels that record a very specific tone, the higher the plot will go for that specific tone. And as you look at the histogram, we have 256 distinct tones going from absolute black on the far left to absolute white at the far right. Specifically, they get numbered from 0 to 255. For, so tone 0 is absolute black and tone 255 is absolute white. So if we look at absolute white, we could see we have a peak here. So we have a specific number of pixels that are recording absolute white, and they get plotted like that. We have a lot more pixels that are recording whatever tone is equivalent to right here. So you could see that that peak is way higher. We have a lot less pixels that are recording tones that are right here. So that is a little lower. So you could see the more pixels that record a very specific tone, the higher the peak will be. The less pixels, the lower the peak. If we go over in the far left, you can see there's a little gap here. That appears to me that there's no absolute black in this image. Whatever uh, image this histogram is representing doesn't have any absolute black in it. There's no uh, nothing there, so there's no black in that area. But there is some absolute white, it appears at least. So you can see how you plot these tones uh, to a chart, basically. And that's your histogram. And it could give you an idea now, in this specific image, just glancing at the histogram, it looks like it's uh, got an even distribution, pretty much, of tones. It's got almost an equal number of dark tones as it has light tones, maybe slightly more uh, light, but then it has an even distribution of mid-tones going across it. So it looks pretty evenly distributed. Now, if we go to a real image, and we look at the histogram. Again, we're looking at this in Lightroom. It really doesn't matter what application you're using, but Lightroom may be a little bit different on how it actually uh, uses the histogram. Uh, as we look at the uh, histogram itself, you can see there's a lot of different plots here. That's because not only is Lightroom just plotting the general tones, that's this kind of gray area right here, the average tones, it's also plotting the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And that's, you could see the red, the green, and the blue chart that's in there as well. But you also could see some other colors there. That's the CMY color space, that's cyan, magenta, and yellow. Um, printers use the CMY color space. So many of us that print our images, we may want to look at the histogram to see how many, say, yellow tones there are, or magenta tones there are, or cyan tones there are uh, when we print our image. In my opinion, Lightroom's probably overburdening us with all these different tones that are being plotted on the histogram. We could really just get away with, you know, the, the histogram, the simplistic histogram in general, and at most the RGB tones being plotted with it. But you'll get the idea. And you could see here, as we look at the histogram, we have a lot of tones kind of in the middle. We have not as many tones on the far right, which are the highlights and not as many tones on the far left, which are the blacks. Now, most applications, when you look at the histogram, will have these little triangles in the corner. Those triangles represent the clipping indicators. And if I go over here on the far right where the highlights reside, and if I just hover over that clipping indicator, 
you'll see red appears right here. That means I'm clipping the highlight over there. Now if you look more specifically, and this is probably mo well, only specific to Lightroom, if you look at that clipping indicator, you can see it's red. It's a red triangle. That means I'm clipping the red channel. All right, so I'm clipping the red channel right there. Now if we look at the histogram in this far left triangle, that's for the shadows, you can see that if I hover over it, you'll see blue appear on the screen, and that means I'm clipping the shadows in that area, or clipping the blacks. A lot of us say we're crushing it, and we're crushing the shadows. Um, that triangle is white or gray, maybe you prefer to call it. That means I'm clipping all three red, green, and blue channels. All of them are being clipped. That's when it's that color. So you can see that we're clipping a little bit there. So that's what those clipping indicators help you in post-production. But, all right, so we have a kind of a landscape scene. It has an equal distribution of tones. We have very bright areas, very dark areas. So I could take this photo, look at the histogram on the back of my camera, and know that I want to aim for a histogram that looks kind of evenly distributed. If my histogram's built up too far to the left when I look at it on the back of the camera, I know I underexposed the scene. If it's built up too far to the right, I know I overexposed the scene. Well, you're probably thinking, well, you could just look at the back image, the image on the back of the camera, right? Well, sometimes that'll fool you. Uh, for instance, uh, on a, any camera, you could adjust the brightness of your LCD display. So maybe you have your display adjusted a little brighter and you'll be looking at a representation of the image on the back of the scene on the back of the camera that isn't really true. And once you get it, let's say, in an application like Lightroom, if you have your display brighter, you may end up looking and go, wow, my image is really dark. I thought it was brighter in the back of the camera. The other thing is the actual conditions you're looking at that image in. If it's a really, really bright day and there's a lot of, like, you know, reflected light bouncing around and you have a lot of glare, it's difficult to see that image on the back of the camera and it may look dark when it really isn't. And conversely, if you're in a really, really bright or a really, really dark room, let's say, looking at that image, it may look brighter than it actually is. So you could get fooled looking at the back uh, of your camera, at the image on the back of your camera. The histogram, once you know how to read it, probably is a better representation of what those tones actually are. But sometimes we're not really going for this kind of look of the histogram. For example, I have this image of my late cat, Eddie. Obviously, it's a high key scene. And if you look at the histogram, now it's a black and white image, so we don't have the RGB or CMY uh, channels plotted. But you could see that in the far right, I have a lot of pixels because I have a lot of white. There's a lot of white there. If I hover over that triangle, you can see a lot of red is getting put on the image. So I'm clipping a lot of the highlights. But I was going for that look. This is the look I wanted. I wanted it to be high key. I wanted it to be kind of a minimalist uh, look at my, my cat. And if we go on the left, you can see that I'm just clipping a little bit of the blacks, like in his eye in here and stuff here. So this histogram, if I looked at it at the back of the camera, no, I didn't. But if I did, this is the look I wanted. This is why you really have to understand what the histogram represents and then you'll be better able to use it for your own images. This is what I wanted. This is perfect. This histogram is perfect as far as I was concerned. Is it a perfect exposure? Well, for me it was. Maybe for you it wasn't. Maybe you wanted uh, some, he was in the back window. Maybe you wanted detail in the backyard to come through. Well, then you're going to want more mid-tone to come through in here. You're not going to want it built up on the far right. Maybe you wanted more detail uh, throughout the, sh the uh, sheer curtains that he was behind. Um, so, you know, obviously it, it's in the eye of the beholder. It's what you're going for, and this is what I was going for. Now, if we look at the other extreme, this is my late dog, Archie. Obviously, it's a low-key shot, and you can see that the histogram is built up way over on the left-hand side. And there's nothing over on the far right at all. And if I go over and I hover over that, you can see now blue gets overlaid on the image. So I'm, I'm really crushing shadows, right? But that's the look I was going for. I wanted just his face to kind of pop out at you. And I wanted uh, everything else to just be black. And that's pretty much what I accomplished. If I go on the far right and I hover over there, you can see that no red is showing up on the image. There's 
no highlight clipping at all. Even though there's some little bit of tiny highlights in there, they're not, they're not clipping. But this is the look I was going for. And again, I didn't do it. But if I did look at the histogram on my back of my camera, this is the representation I would want to see. This is what I, I would want. So you could get an idea. Now, really, personally, I really don't use the histogram. I don't um, have my uh, LCD display on the back of my cameras. I don't have it readjusted. Like I don't have it brighter than it is right out of the box when the camera came out of the box. I don't have it darker, nothing like that. The only time I actually may use it, and I might have only done this less than a dozen times in my entire life, is when I was in a really um, bright situation. Uh, this happens a lot when I'm out hiking. And it's a really sunny day, and there's a lot of bright rocks around me, so we have a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of reflections, and a lot of light, and a lot of, like, um, glare on the back LCD on my camera. And I can't really tell if I properly exposed a landscape scene. And most often, for myself, with most landscape scenes, I, I probably want an even distribution of tones in the image. So I'll look at the histogram in those instances and make sure that I've exposed that scene properly. Uh, when in doubt, I'll just bracket my images and then I won't even bother looking at the histogram. So I'm one of those that doesn't often use the histogram, but again, it is a great tool and it may help you uh, better expose your image or help you make sure you're exposing it the way you want to expose it. So that's Histogram 101. I hope it helps you uh, become a better photographer. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.